For Best Music Coach, my name is Dan, and what you are doing right now is you are watching a music teacher's reaction live and in real time to, well, Risk of Rain 2 original soundtrack. I've never played this game. I've never heard the soundtrack before in my life. Not once ever, never, ever, ever have I ever. And so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to listen to it and give you my reactions, my thoughts. I'll break some things down about the music theory and the everything that's going on. And, well, we're just going to see what happens. So we're live. Hey, chat, how's it going? And let's do this thing. Here we go. Risk of Rain 2. We're going to start with through a cloud darkly because ending with an adverb is always the way to go. does sound very darkly, doesn't it? Wow, so many different scents transitioning. Okay, so what we're hearing already, even just from that, well, taste of the first thing is like so much complexity and well thought out development, which is, well, I have heard Risk of Rain, the first one, what I've now come to just expect from Chris. Um, sorry, buddy. One day I will get your name right. Today's not going to be that day. Uh, but yeah, Chris, uh, Chris Dodulu, I think. I'm getting that right. Perhaps not. Anyway, uh, really fun, really cool. Uh, let's look out for things like that in the future where we hear certain notes, certain patterns that are played in one synthesizer and then they transition to a di different synthesizer or they're kind of revealed using different uh, filters and things of that nature. Okay, uh, the next one is called uh, Risk of Rain 2, an appropriate title. Chris Todulu. All right, I, I got it. That little clicking sound is so delicious. It's like a little amuse bouche.
So I think it's into here. It's almost like you have that four note grouping with one extra one, as in like the sequel to Risk of Rain, maybe? Maybe I'm pushing the interpretation there. <laughs> A little yum. It sounds like when you select Yoshi in Mario Kart. <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> The rhythm is different on the four notes, Toad. That is correct. Oh, so Dream Theater. Oh my gosh. That drum fill was like straight out of Octavarium, I think. Or is it the one where there's all those highways on the album cover? Yeah, so uh, so ju just to update you, if you're watching this and you, and you uh, maybe can't see the chat, but chat was just talking about how, and I love those little Yoshis right at the end. Uh, can we, yeah, and then a Yoshi with uh, reverb and uh, maybe a little echo or delay. Uh, hey, so uh, chat was mentioning, so the albums I was referencing, Octavarium and uh, For the Life of Me, what's the name of that? You, you know, I saw a wet light shining there before me, walking to it, I waited for the end, a final vision, promising salvation, resurrection for a fall man, do you still wait for your God? What's the name of that song and what album is it off of? Um, uh, because that, it's like that drum fill into that song is like t t straight out of there off that Dream Theater album. So, it, oh, by the way, we're talking about a band called Dream Theater, who's an awesome awesome band incredible uh they've had a couple personnel changes over the years uh current lineup is unreal uh mike uh, mangini on the drums uh, john petrucci guitar uh james labrie vocals uh jordan rudess um and of course uh john uh myung i think is as how you say his last name anyway sick 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 band if you like this soundtrack go check them out uh, because you will really, really enjoy Dream Theater. Okay, this next one is called Evapor Evapotranspiration. Very interesting.
think there's something wrong with the town of Hawkins. That reference is not going to age well. <laughs> Someone Google ev evapotranspiration real quick. Oh, oh, this is sick. I wasn't really paying attention, but something really surprised me a couple seconds ago. Oh, it's legit thundering outside. I thought it was in the recording. <laughs> Yeah, Ellie, exactly right. And it's not even about the time signature being hard to pin down, it's that it's like... It's like there's these cycles on top of cycles happening, like perhaps polymeter. That's three over two there, that new thing coming in. Or six over four. Ah, I can do it with my feet. Oh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't three over two. Hang on. I'm going to go get that. I want to leave you wrong. We're going to get it. 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 Oh yeah, it is three over two. Yeah, okay, I had it right the first time. Okay, this next one is called Thermodynamic Equilibrium. C 
see already. Okay, already. The setup of where the hi-hat is versus where the riff is. <laughs> drums are doing and if it comes back around I'll tell you what the other thing is doing <laughs> this is sick I love it is it 5 over 4 gotta be honest with you 5 over 4 is the one polyrhythm I've never really taking the time to learn. Well, there are a couple. Otter Gamer, I see why, and I thank you. No, no, no. Guys, I'm not saying 5-4. No, 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 no. I'm saying 5 over 4. Polyrhythm. Different than a time signature. break down what I mean by this whole numbers thing I've been talking about right after this. See, this is 4-4. Four, four. Huh. Ah, but right there, there's extra clap in there. <laughs> it's for, for, for a moment. So that let bong, ging, gong, ging, gong, got that was five. I love that acoustic guitar in there. Sweet riff. Oh, 
Okay, so uh, a couple things I want to talk about. First, it's really interesting to see how the composer, Chris, really does like to tease things. So in Risk of Rain 1, the soundtrack, we heard a lot of times that he'd like tease an ending or tease a theme or tease a drop, and it just wouldn't happen. Might sneeze. Maybe not going to sneeze. Um, and then... <sighs> Knew it was coming, excuse me. Okay. And then we hear right here in this last one is he actually te he's like teasing four four. He's like he takes you out on these journeys of like fives and these polyrhythmic like escapades. But then what he does is he brings you back and just for like one moment, he just hands you that four four, which it's like a, a just like a bite of vanilla ice cream and just the complete insanity that's going around it. And it like grounds you and it brings you back. And it's it's really amazing to hear. Now what I was talking about with the numbers, okay, so there's two things. One is called a time signature. Now, a time signature means basically how many beats there are in every measure. And you could think about this basically of uh, how many counts it takes for uh, a song to cycle back around to where it feels like it's starting again. So uh, for here, a lot of times it's like, I, again, I was kind of flubbing whatever was going on in the, in the voice, but you understand I'm doing groups of five. Now, what that means is basically there's five pulses or five things that's happening, and that, that group of five is going around and around, and that's sort of the way that we're hearing the music, because we're hearing it in these groups of five. Now, something else uh, that is also happening uh, that uh, Chris has done here in this soundtrack and also in Risk of Rain 1 is called a polyrhythm. Now, what a polyrhythm is, it's completely separate from a time signature. What a polyrhythm is, is when you take two groups of those pulses. So, for example, those five, but I'm going to make it a little easier on myself. And I'm going to say it's going to be a group of three. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. And what you do is you put a different set of pulses so like a two, that takes the same amount of time as the three. So if you think about it, the amount of time it takes me to do three is the same amount of time it's gonna take me to do two. So it'd be like. So my right hand's doing three, left hand's doing two. That's a polyrhythm. Another polyrhythm would be like a four over three. Now, as I mentioned during the stream, working on polyrhythms besides a f like five over two. Uh, it's very easy to put anything over two because you have to divide it in half. But putting five over four is not something I have ever done. So I wasn't able to actually demonstrate that there. Uh, so interesting, very advanced rhythmic uh, ideas uh, using those advanced polyrhythms there. Okay, this next one is called uh, Terra Pluvium. Perhaps someone who can speak Latin, tell me what pluvia means. That's right, Ka. Good ears. So even what's happening now with those like gamelan bells, it's sick. Yeah, like that too. It, it's it's sick. <laughs> yeah, I like right there. You just did the same thing with the bells, but that's synth.
Ah. Yeah, guitar creeping in, Nubis. Good ears. In your right headphone there. Oh, now it's on the left, too. Ah, dee da da Oh, no, it was a different rhythm when we heard the... No, it was a different rhythm. What was that rhythm? Huh. Oh, I get funky now. the way he uses percussion oh. <laughs> do you know that little thing it sounded kind of like a A cricket playing a cricket sized piano. There it is again. It's still going. Was sick. <laughs> so we had that same little cricket idea. Oh, my gosh. Oh, come on. Come on. No. I think we're building to something. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. sick. That's not two guitars. One's a guitar, one's a keyboard. The one on the right and center is guitar. The one on the left that's going really high, that's a keyboard. That's not a guitar. Or if it is, they're they're doing some weird and wacky things with it. When you hear those pitch shift things, 
that's with a keyboard and I'll show you in a second. A hundred and fifty percent gorgeous. That was amazing. All right, I want to show you guys how I know that that was a sorry. How I know that was a synth and not uh, indeed a guitar uh, underneath. And if you give me one second, I think I'll be able to get us some kind of sound here. Let's see if I can get us. Uh, uh, let's see. Do we have any? Eh, well, we'll just do it with the, um, do it with the, da, ba, 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 ba. well, whatever. This is going to be it. Oh, no, I need to download extra content. That was a mistake. All right. Um, okay, so, hang on. This is going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. All right, so look, you have this thing on a keyboard that's called pitch bend that does that. So, Whenever you hear in a soul of something go, all right, and you hear that kind of wow thing and it's even, guitars will bend too, but it doesn't sound quite like that. So that's how I know for sure that was a synthesizer because that type of pitch bend in there is a very particular sound. Okay. So, uh, let's uh, keep this thing rocking and rolling uh, with Kuppen as Fudge. Hot chocolate. Jeff Berzaki, I should have said that. That was good. <laughs> yes, actual polyrhythms rhythm, here, Rums Battle. So we just heard like quintuplets. It's like groups of five in that hi hat, I think.
I have no words other than to say thank you all for being here and going on this journey with me because this is so much fun and I'm so grateful to have you here. Thank you. The next one is called Distrometer. We have a group of seven. No, the drums are not in four. You hear that? How that kick comes in early? Messed me up that time. Love that little fill right at the end there.
So I think what's interesting too is this sort of like kind of gamelami, gamelan-ish sound. You've heard a lot. You know that time when I said it sounded like a cricket playing a piano? I think that was actually the Gamelon, too. And this music has got me stank facing so hard, I'm going to split my lips. Okay, so one thing I do want to point out is actually a comment made by Bex Lizard, a uh, subscriber um, and uh, channel member. Uh, Bex pointed out and said, hey, this actually sounds a little bit like Herbie Hancock. And the first time Bex said it, I was like, no, it doesn't. And then I was like, no, duh, it does kind of sound like Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hancock, if you, if you don't know, is a pioneering piano and synthesizer player. Absolutely incredible. Go check his stuff out. Uh, I rem I'm reminded specifically of one of his solos, uh, which he did on Chaka Khan's version of Night in Tunisia. And that synth solo there, uh, sick. And this does indeed remind me of that great call, Bex. Very interesting point to bring that up. Uh, this next one is called Into the Doldrums.
the way this is building, it's like so magnificent. Oh, very pretty. So that's a guitar with a harmonizer on it, sounds like. Oh, gorgeous guitar work. So tasteful. Okay, so something I do want to point out that's very interesting about uh, Chris is that, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, soundtracks out there where there's like a minimalist approach. So I think perhaps Minecraft, uh, like the, C, the C418 stuff, um, even even the, 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 the Lena stuff, but like the C418 stuff, it's like really minimal. It's like a couple things going on. Uh, especially like the the exploration type track things, you know, like Sweden and things like that. It's like very little going on. And when you listen to this soundtrack, it's like everything 
everything is going on. Not only is everything going on, but everything is going on in most of the tracks. And it's so cool to hear like how much and how crazy and how dense everything gets in. And by the way, if you've never produced a song and you don't really understand what goes into like making a song get to the point where you and I are listening to it like this, the amount of work that it takes to balance all of those elements that's called mixing, the amount of work it takes to mix that many things going on and make it sound this good is honestly, in my opinion, almost comparable to the act of the composition itself. Because it's 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 in, an incredible presentation, but it's like you had the best chef in the world create the most amazing food in the world, and then someone just threw it at your face and maybe something got in your mouth. That's what it's like not having mixing. And then having mixing is the best chef in the world puts it on like the coolest plate ever and like it looks like a swan, but really it's, you know, uh, the really it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, like asparagus. And like, that's what I'm talking about. And so it's like, yeah, mix engineers. It's like, yo, for real, whoever mixed and mastered this, epic respect. Obviously, respect to Chris, but wow. Okay, Swan Spaghetti, very good, Jacob. Okay, we're going to keep this thing rocking and rolling with uh, a glacier eventually farts. And don't you listen to the song of life? <laughs> oh, what a name for a title. Chris mixed this? Yo, epic respect to that fellow. It's a Werner Herzog. The only quote I can make of Werner Herzog is bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Except he didn't do the guttural R, but anyway. We start a petition for Chris to like score the next Star Wars series on Disney Plus. Oh my gosh.
One sound there, like zing, like zingy, rubby, uh, like string, uh, uh, like pick scrapey sound. It was just once. A lot of times, Chris does, he's like, he puts one sound in once, and it's like the most genius sound. Oh, I'm like, you get it once. So our track number 24, which is a bonus, is a Glacier Eventually Farts in-game version, so we will have that. Okay, the next one is called... Um, uh, hold, please. Oh, now nah, that's gone up on the screen. There's no way to get that down. Ah, there we go. All right. Ah. This next one is called um, Nighttime Global Warming. Uh, let's uh, let's keep the swing rocking and rolling here. Just that percussion right there. Listen to those. That little, that little gesture there. Yeah. So listen for this. It's getting passed around to different instruments. There it was, that sort of like ghost sounding one. Might have even just got it there reverse too. Oh, that bass is atrocious. In the best way, by the way.
Oh, love that crushy, bit crushy sound on that drum there. You guys hear that drum sounds like a little fuzzy, a little staticky? That one. And there's another one. All right, let's uh, let's get our names back up here. This next one is called The Dehydration of Risk of Rain 2. That's the full name of the track. So we're here in groups of six here. Oh, we were. Yeah, Aspie, sometimes I start talking and because I have to talk and music at the same time, my wires get crossed. say 12 8 just because the chords were lasting for two cycles of six so what we can hear happening right now is what we heard at the very beginning which is one idea being presented and then represented again sounding a little bit different the second time it comes back around Sus, sus four chord right there. Oh, listen how short that snare is. Ooh. It's that little bit of slap back over there. Thank you. 
We also heard this chord progression a little bit before. rhythm at the end and Yoshi again okay so yum, yum. yeah there you go Yoshi so uh, we actually heard that chord progression before actually in the same key we heard uh, I think it was that same as that chord progression a minor D minor a minor D minor mm, a minor D minor a minor I'm not sure I'm gonna tell it does that and then we go to F uh, and then Suss it, resolve it. Uh, well, suss it, bring the sus down, then resolve it. So when I say a chord is sus, I do not mean suspicious. I mean suspended. So in music, the way it works is we have numbers. So we have numbers for notes. So remember the number, remember the sound. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, we can go one, two, three, four, five. And we, if we take one, three, five, we play all three at the same time, that gets us what is called a major triad. You can just think of it as being a chord. One, three, five, together at the same time. Now, if we change three and we make it one, four, five, that's called sus because we're taking three and we're suspending it up to the fourth. And then we can bring it back down. We can also bring the three down to two. And then it's a sus two back to the triad. So that's what I mean by a sus chord. And I will go ahead and... Uh, handle that uh thanks mods i do appreciate that so uh let's keep this thing rocking and rolling with uh parjanya Let's get some J Dilla up in here. Come on now. Well, it actually was five over two, I think, technically there. right there it's every second cycle he shows you where the two is if the two over five which really is just going on the and of three of the five Thank you. 
So yes, I have absolutely no idea what Chad is talking about right now. But uh, what I will say is uh, the following. It's very interesting. Uh, and again, if you have never done music production, the amount of work that went into making this to sound the way it does is insane. Like, I wouldn't know how many hours to put to it, but hundreds, if not, if not a thousand plus, I mean, a lot, a lot of hours went into making this sound the way it does like a, a huge amount of work and huge respect to Chris. All right. This next one is called, uh, hydrophobia, which I'm assuming is the fear of hydraulic press videos on YouTube. It's four and I don't trust it. Anymore. This is our original four. <laughs> One, two, three. That was absolutely sick. Oh my gosh. It started out in 4-4 four four and I was like, man, I do not trust this. There's no way this is going to stay in 4-4. Four four. Uh-uh. So also something I really want to talk about is it is so cool to have heard Risk of Rain 1 first and now be listening to Risk of Rain 2, you can see not only the progression and like the cracking open, maybe someone could give me a compound German word that'd be really good for like the cracking open of a composer, but like uh, j just the like the, just the, uh, the artistic, not even blossoming, but just like arrival of like, you listen to Risk of Rain 1 versus this, and it's like, they're both amazing. Don't get me wrong. But you can hear how this is clearly a step forward in someone's artistic evolution uh, when you compare the two together. It's 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 amazing. I mean, the the mix, the the daringness of doing things, the, 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 the yeah, 
a luchtung, yeah, but I'm, I'm looking for like the, 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 uh, you know, there's got to be something there. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. Let's keep this thing going with um, Antarctic Oscillation. Makes me think of some crazy guy in a mosh pit. Like, have you ever been to like some heavy music? And you just see someone's eyes are gone and they're just like. Oh, I love it. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, double kick drop.
I love this whole thing. This little fuck up, go go. Yes, the dot sounds. Atomic, great call. We're on the same page. I think that's five over four right there. We're technically ten over four. Well, that would be the same as five over two. Anyway, seven over five says Peter. Uh, I clearly need to go do some homework and work on my polyrhythm identification skills because I got to be honest with you, have never really had to use those much eh, ever. So uh, yeah, clearly I need to go work on my polyrhythms. But hey, uh, we are all growing and all learning. That's a really cool thing about music. Um, Yo, uh, hey, please hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And uh, if you are a gamer and you want to understand more about music theory, there's a free list for you. It's pinned in the chat. It's 10 things every gamer should know about music theory. You click on it. It's free for you, from me, and you get more free things tomorrow and the next day and things like that. Okay, this next one is called The Rain, formerly known as Purple. I never meant to cause you any sorrow. Komponistenaufbruch. Vielen Dank. Oh, this just struts. On organ. Oh, we've heard this before. We've heard this before. Risk of rain, okay. Chanson d'automne. Eh ouais.
Come on now. I'll see if I catch you next time around. Come on, baby. Please? Gotcha. Sick. Come on, guitar. You tell him. Yes! Come on, come on, come on! Come on, guitar! Ah, it's Purple Rain! But he's, but he, he's leaving the notes out, so he cannot technically get sued for copyright infringement. But we all know what he means. Oh! Guitar's playing it! Oh, this is daring. This is daring. This is bold. Oh! Which also, every night you cry yourself to sleep. It's also Maroon 5. There you go. Yeah, that guitar had that really high note right at the end there. That's what I wanted. Beautiful. We've heard this too. Did we hear this in Risk of Rain 1? Something like this? Oh no, that's the end. Da, da, be, da, ba, ba, ba. Isn't that how Purple Rain ends too? Da, bo, ba, be, da, ba, ba, ba. My brain's getting a little fuzzy here. Is that Risk of Rain? Or is that... Is that the end of Purple Rain, or is that a Beatles song I just heard? Okay. Was that that? Okay, that's how Purple Rain ends. Thank you, Fumble Tune. I'm like sitting there. I'm like, man, is that the Beatles? Is that something I heard like two days ago? 
What is that? Thank you very much. Okay. This next one is called The Raindrop That Fell To the Sky. We're having fun with prepositions. so cool. So that's four over three right there, I think. Three over two, sorry. I'm not going to try doing that. Yeah, so it started out feeling like 10. You guys are right. But then once it goes to that crazy thing, no clue what's happening there. Or two groups of five, but yeah.
So here we have it. Yeah, maybe ten, more likely five. But I could be wrong. I know it, the downbeats don't feel like they're every five. That's exactly right. Who said that? Bob. Yeah, it feels like a cycle of ten. You're 100% correct. But which is more likely for a composer to write in ten or five? That's the only reason I'm saying five. That is true. Yeah, Bob, I've never seen 10. Five plus five, man. What you're saying, sauce.
Okay, before we listen to the next one, I do want to point something out. So a lot of times we're hearing these drum fills in the middle of songs uh, that transition between things or even that just break up a cycle of, well, let's say uh, four bars or eight bars or something. And this style drum fills, if you go back and you listen to Dream Theater, you go, you listen to Octavarium, someone please help me, what is the name of the album that has As I Am on it, that has like the highways on the, uh, on the like the overpasses on the album cover, the on-ramps on the album cover. But it's like, you go back and you listen to those two albums, I mean, a little bit, uh, scenes from a distant memory, a little, that's like when there's, they're sort of, that, that's like their risk of rain one, right? But you, you, you listen to those, that sound of Octavarium and please someone help me. What is the name of that dream theater album that has the overpasses on it? It has, as I am on it, which is my favorite song off that, um, uh, off that album. But anyway, if you go back and you listen to that, um, train of thought, perhaps. Yes. Uh, that it's, it's really, uh, it, it's systematic chaos. Yeah. Systematic chaos sounds more like it or train of thought. Anyway, during that Mike Portnoy era of dream theater, you hear that type of stuff all over the place. And it's so cool to hear it here in a game soundtrack. I absolutely, absolutely a hundred percent love, love, love this soundtrack. And for me personally, so far, I'm not even done. And I can tell you that this soundtrack is earning a place on my physical iPod next to Dream Theater, next to Hellborg Lane and Sype, next to all that Greg Howe, all the progressive weird stuff I like to listen to. This is 100% going on the iPod. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's genius. It's fantastic. I'm so into this. Like, I'm going to take the trouble of getting this thing onto my iPad that I still have. Um, this next one is called, You're Going to Need a Bigger Ukulele, which I think is a reference to We're Going to Need a Bigger Gun. Isn't that from Sigourney Weaver in that uh, in Alien? Was that was that the was that the movie you're gonna we're gonna need a bigger gun? All right, let's uh, check this out. You're gonna need a bigger ukulele. Let's do this thing. Jaws. We need a bigger boat. Duh. Oh yeah, come on now. That little pixel sound in there too. Oh! 
sec. Oregon going in and out in the left here. Ha! Love the way that ended too. So you may notice if you've watched this channel a bit, sometimes I'm playing my guitar a lot with streams and sometimes I'm not. This is one of the streams where I'm not playing my guitar a whole lot with streams and it's because the music is so complex. I'm not confident I'm going to get it in the first time around listening to it just once. Um, and it just consistently changing, consistently moving. Uh, and so because of that, you're not going to see me playing a whole lot. Sometimes I'll pick a little bit and point it out to you. 100% loving this. This is so cool. This music is right up my alley. This is the kind of music that I like to listen to. Uh, this next one is called Con Lentitude Poderosa. Con Lentitude Poderosa. I, I'm not sure if I said that right, but we're gonna get we're gonna do it. Here we go. <laughs> when he told me that he loved me, <laughs> it's it's how insensitive. How removed and cold Seeing When I told him so sincerely Oh boy.
Oh, it was almost, um... One by Metallica, but it wasn't. <laughs> well, let's see if I, I'm, I'm a little fried because we've been here for a minute, but let's see if my brain can remember what I just played. So it was like, And then this is really should be C minor with E flat in the bass. D flat. G sus. Nailed it. Okay. Loved it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This next one is called Petrichor 5 or Petrichor V. Y'all, a troopers chat. We just passed two hours. I think this is detuned a little bit. I don't think this is A440. There we go. Thank you. 
So I'm going to talk just a little bit. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply. <laughs> Feel your toes. <laughs> Guided meditations with Dan. Seriously, though. Um, something that's very interesting here. And sorry, Chris, I am going to talk over the music. Is that... really well done ambient music is not as simple as you might think it is oh changing drone here I'd like to welcome you all welcome you all to this meditation practice yeah um yeah tension and release Draconicore, yes. But it's also like when we were listening to Elden Ring and we had that whole first like two hours of music and it was all ambient. There's more to it than just some little thing. And it's not the composer's going to sleep just holding, you know, it's not like Chris fell asleep and his nose just like happened to conveniently land on a C note on the keyboard. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, it's not just noise, exactly. You hear how it's evolving. Chris's nose is so... Chris has so much talent. When he falls asleep, his nose hit the, hits the keyboard. This is what happens. That's how, that's how talented Chris is. <laughs> I like that. Oh! There's that F sharp. I knew it's gonna be lit in at some point. Or maybe not F sharp, but whatever whatever the drone is. I don't have perfect pitch. Yeah, let's we'll see. Yeah, we're Ah uh, Listen for it. It's in there. Yeah. Creeper belt too. Says they caught that F sharp too. Yeah, beautiful. And that's another example of those times where Chris is giving you one time a taste of something that's just incredible. We've seen it in Risk of Rain 1. We've heard it here as well, that there's going to be moments where it's like just a flavor, just a taste. You get it once, and that's it, you're done. It doesn't come back. So, a, a truly amazing piece of ambient music brought to you by, I mean, look, you know, when Chuck Norris does push-ups, he actually stays in place, and it's the earth that moves down, and Chris has so much talent 
that when he falls asleep on a keyboard and his nose hits a single note, that's how good it sounds. This next one is called Lacrimosum. Let's do it. Excuse me, that little like, that wasn't me burping. That was straight up, I drank water and then my throat got confused. Just to be clear on what just happened in the mic. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. So, this is a uh, same chord progression as Colin Lentitude uh, Poderosa. Yeah. Well, similar. Also, there was two chord progressions in Poderosa. I only pointed out one of them, by the way, because one time it didn't go to the E flat, uh, I think. It's not over. Ah, beautiful. Fascinating, fascinating sounds. Uh, all right, so we're actually going to go listen to some bonus tracks now. We have four bonus tracks, so make sure you hang out for those. Before we do that, please do hit like, subscribe, crush that notification bell. I don't run ads on this channel, even though Google is, uh, YouTube is telling me, well, technically Google, but YouTube is telling me right now, now would be a good time to insert ads. I'm not going to do it. What I am going to tell you is that there's a free thing for you to download in the chat. It's going to be in the comments if you're watching this uh, video on demand. It's the 10 things every gamer should know about music theory. Go get it while you're there. Grab a copy of my music theory book and then grab a copy of my music theory course because it's made just for gamers to help you understand your favorite video game music. Go get it. All right. Let's keep this thing rocking and rolling. Uh, called... Uh, monsoon 2.0 let's do this thing
that was really cool. This next one is called Monster 2.0 Short Edit. And if y'all who have watched a couple of these streams will know, what's happening right here is six to seven, going eventually back to one, perhaps. There it is, six, seven, one, minor chord progression. This next one is Monsoon 2.0 2 Alt version. Yeah, someone said ukulele at the end, and sure enough, <laughs> ba chung ka chung chung we had a little ukulele strum in there right at the end. Okay, we have one more track to listen to. This is called Bonus, A Glacier Eventually Farts, in-game version. Here is violent bass. I 
could see asphyxiation and choking and fighting for survival and just rotting away. Of course, there's a lot of misery. The trees here are in misery and the birds are in misery. I don't think they, they sing, they just screech in pain. But it is the same misery that is all around us. That reminds me of uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. What's that piece called? Ah, the spokes are Arthustra, yeah. Is that it? Whoever goes I don't remember the name. This has his share of that curse. It's a land that God has created in anger. Even the, the stars up here in the, in the sky look like a mess. Taking a close look at what's around us, there is some sort of a harmony. The harmony of overwhelming and collective murder. But when I say this, I say this all full of admiration. It is not that I hate it, I love it. I love it very much. But I love it against my better judgment. Huh. What a fascinating way to end this OST. Thank you all so much for watching and for hanging out. I love this 100%. I have nothing to say other than this is going on the iPod, and I loved it. I really, 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 really enjoyed this. The time flew by that honestly did not feel like how long we've we been here, two and a half hours or something? Like, yeah, didn't feel like it. That was really awesome. I understand why a lot of people say that this is their favorite OST or the best percussion on an OST. Everyone, I want to I want to know what you think. Let me know in the chat right now because a lot of people are saying best percussion OST you ever heard. People say, uh, you know, let, I want to. Okay, favorite OST says Otter Gamer. Amazing video game, Amazing Soundtrack, Legendary says Victor. Lucky we saw the Yeah, we're going to do the DLCs. Oh, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because we're going to do the DLC. Just love it. Uh, says Sky. Uh, Skull says four months worth the wait. Um, favorite. Yeah, says HK Blau. Best of all time, period, says Stinky Boy. Marcus says definitely top three OSTs. Definitely favorite OST says Noxious. Best mixing any video game I've ever heard says uh, Con Constrize. Uh, favorite OST, to be honest, yes, yeah, is, uh, oh no, not to be honest, but favorite OST says Katwepler, uh, feels very unique, best synth OST ever, says Suhi, one of my favorites, definitely the most unique, says Flame Y, most interesting, says Toad, top OSTs, absolutely, yeah, everyone, incredible, really, 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 really incredible, I mean, the creativity of Chris coming in and doing this, it's it, it's an incredible piece of art. It's an honor to hear it <laughs> and to experience it. And I'm really glad I got to hear it and experience it with you guys for real. Uh, favorite song of the I couldn't possibly point to a favorite one. I, I did really, really like this, and this is definitely one of my favorite OSTs I've ever heard. 
this is some of my favorite music. I really like it. It's really, really good. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Guys, if you want to understand more about music theory, grab the top 10 things every gamer should know about music theory. It's free for you while you're there. Grab a copy of my music theory book. It's on sale right now on Amazon for like $29.99, but you can get it for like super cheap because it's a digital copy. The digital copies are not available, by the way. Those digital copies are not available anywhere else. You can't get a digital copy on Amazon. You only get physical copies on Amazon. I'll give the digital copies to you guys. So go check it out for real. That's uh, for you. Uh, and let's read some super chats. Oh, also get the course for gamers because it's a steal. It, it's crazy. I had someone convince me to discount it. I was not going to give it away this cheap. I was going to charge... 250% more for it. That's a start. Uh, anyway, so yeah. If you want to learn more about music theory, grab that course. Uh, okay. Let's uh, read some super chats. Let's get this track list out of here. There we go. All right. Let's go. Okie dokie. By the way, if you've not super chatted yet and you would like to super chat, you can do so. Uh, all you got to do is just say the name of an OST you want me to react to, and then we'll put it on the list and upload it. Okay, so the story of us says, hey man, love the channel, great place to expose myself to new game music. Yeah, for me too. That's both of us. I uh, thought I'd offer a split donor here with a couple of suggestions, The Last of Us and Last of Us Part 2. Great OSTs. You got it, the story of us. Um... Venom Dragon says, ever since I started watching when you reacted to Persona 5, I've only ever wanted two soundtracks, Persona 4, Golden, and Risk of Rain 2. So excited for this. Well, Venom Dragon, you got it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your super chat. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience, too, while we got around to it. What the Dude says, can't wait for the whole stream, but I'm happy I can make a Risk of Rain 2's OST is super good. Hope you have fun with it, uh, listening to it. Uh, vote for Furry or Fury. You got it, what the dude? Jonah Vianello says, Hey Dan, loving that, loving the reactions. Uh, love this game's music. Me too. But this towards Deadbolt, which Chris also made the music for. It's also amazing. Oh, thanks for upvoting that, Jonah. I look forward to doing that. Equus Stenchman. Hey, Equus. Equus says, this uh, soundtrack is so good. Thrilled to hear your thoughts on it. In a semi-related note, I am also going to slow... Uh, I'm slowly going to lift Disco Elysium up to listening depth over the course of years. You got it, Equus. Well, thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. Poking Mango say, I'm hearing so much awesome music from games I've never played and might not have heard otherwise. Me too. Uh, it's why this channel is great. I agree. Bumping Legend of Mana or Mana... Uh, some more so it'll have a chance to catch up someday you got it poking mangoes thank you for your support and for your super chat uh love seeing you around on the channel taco tony ttv hey taco tony taco tony says what an amazing ost for such an amazing game agreed on the ost uh please put this towards ori in the blind forest uh the fact that uh those games are so low on the list is criminal Smooth criminal. Is Amy okay? Sorry, I was just banning a bot. As one does. Bex Lizard says Final Fantasy 8. You got it, Bex. DM. Hey, DM. DM says caught another stream, which means I'm once again donating money towards my favorite uh, React content for my favorite series, Kingdom Hearts, specifically towards Kingdom Hearts 2. Jack O'Connor, I've been thinking about it. Not quite sure how we're going to figure that out. Alessandro Quello, AC in the house. So putting this one sword, Devil May Cry 5. Much love. Thank you. Alessandro Quello, sailing love right back to you. Headburger, Handburger, excuse me, says Risk of Rain OC Slaps uh, Plus. Uh, please put this towards Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2 OST. Handbanger, I can do that. That means I'm going to have to split it. Um... Awareness and Folds. By the way, I don't mind splitting. 
just making sure that's clear. Uh, Awareness Unfold says, Risk Grenade 2 sure is a cool OST, huh? Yes. Very much looking forward to the Ace Combat 7 reaction. Uh, you know, uh, know you'll like it. This one goes to Fire Emblem Three Houses, needs a push. So, chat, which house are you? Black Eagles, Blue Lions, or Golden Deer? I have no idea what I just read at the end, but I read it. Okay. Cocoa. Well, uh, Draco Connor, you can vote for whatever you want. And as of right now, I have committed to reacting to everything on that list. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Cocoa says, start watching your OST reactions a while. Started watching your OST reactions a while ago. And I just wanted to say, keep up uh, the great work. Also, you should listen to the Rain World soundtrack. So we're going to upvote the Rain World soundtrack. And if it's not on the list already, we're going to add it there. Cocoa, thank you for your support. Thank you for your super chat. Jappy Padataki. This is goes to Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. You got it. My favorite game right now? Oh, asked JJ Jenkins. What's my favorite game right now? I don't know. I'm playing as the latest Assassin's Creed. And that's an uh, interesting, interesting story. I won't give any spoilers, but the way the way you find your way to having the assassination ability is very interesting. Um, Heckle Man says, do you teach any personal one-on-one -on -one guitar lessons? Yes, I do. Head on over to bestmusiccoach.com. Click on guitar and you will find me there. I do have very, very limited availability so if you do want a spot i always recommend going to grab it the only reason why so many slots are open right now is actually because there's a bug on my calendar where i can't reduce my availability but as soon as that bug gets fixed which may be tomorrow uh my availability is going to get very very small so if you want some lessons go over and grab it bestmusiccoach.com uh don Don Chikak says, uh, when is it reasonable to upvote a series versus one OST? It's always reasonable to upvote a series. However, uh, the way the list works is there's one OST at a time. Uh, so you can always do it. But that's, uh, that's how it goes. Let's see if I can report. Oh, report. Unwanted. Oh, yeah, explicit material. There we go. Weirdness Unfolds says, actually changed my mind about the AC7 playlist. The Spotify one might actually be better since it's officially mixed and better than the YouTube one. It's just I couldn't find that one uh, list because it's not available. Oh, it's not available in Sweden. Yeah, Weirdness. I had a couple people comment saying that the mix on the AC7 um Spotify is actually better, and we should always go in that direction. Uh, so great for conf confirming that, and we're all set to go. By the way, if you want some free stuff, you should totally hang out to the end of the stream. Uh, the Story of Us says, uh, just thought of another crazy game soundtrack that doesn't get enough love. If we could split this donut between Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon Forbidden West, some transfixing stuff going on there. You got it, Story of Us. We'll make that happen. Weirdness Unfolds says, uh, plus the Spotify one contains zero from uh, Ace Combat 5, uh, one of my favorite OSC tracks of all time. The fact that the list contains some remastered music from earlier games is just good. Sweet. Garfield, Garfield, thank you very much for your generous super chat. Garfield says, hi, Dan. I'm so glad I finally caught one of your OST reaction streams live. I'm so happy to be here right now, not only because I love your reaction streams, but also Risk of Rain 2 is one of my favorite video games. Could you please react to Cyberpunk 2077 OST? Thank you. Yes, Garfield. The answer is yes. We're, if it's not already on the list, we're going to add it. And we're going to use your super chat to upvote it. So thank you very much for your support. Thank you for your super chat. And thank you for watching. Don. Hey, Don, Don's back again, says, would you react to a whole video game cover albums is voted? No, I will react to video game soundtracks on this channel because we already have a ton of soundtracks to get through. So we need to be specific or rather I just say I need to be specific about what I'm going to react to. Max, not quite. You can rewind though. I think I enabled DVR if you want to go watch me react to the music. Weirdness Unfold says, whoops, forgot my OST pick for the last three. 
Uh, would that be... Yes, we'll, I'll add it up. Uh, Zelda Twilight Princess. You have got it. Uh, weirdness unfolds. Garfield says, get Chris on Disney Plus Fund. I agree. Uh, Elijah Y says, might have to play Risk of Rain after hearing this. Uh, put the super chat towards near a replicant because you've got to hear Kane's theme. Toad. Toad celebrating four months at Kazoo Club membership level. Awesome, Toad. Glad to have you here. Garfield says, my favorite soundtrack. One of mine, too, for sure. No doubt. Komradsky says, put this towards Ace Combat Zero. You got it. Grimbo says, Risk Rain 2 is a great game. Uh, I've died plenty of times wh while listening to the wonderful tracks. Putting this towards Final Fantasy VIII. Garfield says, believe it or not, Dan. Uh, you, oh, by the way, you got it, Grimbo. Sorry, guys. I'm a little fried if I get a little ADD here. Okay. Uh, Garfield says, believe it or not, Dan, a ukuleles and Risk of Rain 2 are weaponized. <laughs> weaponized ukuleles. That's excellent and hilarious. Thank you for sharing, Garfield. And thank you for your support today with the Super Chats. Rubberman. Rubberman202 in the house. Since for some reason I missed the alert for this stream. Sorry, I'm late. No worries. You'll catch up on it. Once again, put this towards Mother 3. Here's hoping it stays in the top five. Agreed, Rubberman. It'll happen. Celador says, while it's not well known and only a handful of tracks, I'd love to know your take uh, sometime on the OST for the SNES Jurassic Park game. I've never played that game. I'll see if I can find it and pop it into my SNES. Uh, their use of both audio channels was what sparked my love for musical theory as a kid. That's fascinating and a really cool story. Thank you for sharing that, Celador. And thank you for your support and your super chat. Now, we actually have a very special guest in the stream. We have a Pokemon, the Pokemon Pikachu. And the Pokemon Pikachu says, Pika Pika, Pika 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 Pika, Pika Pika, Pika P, Pika. Which translated in English, uh, translated into English, is absolutely loving these ROR streams. Amazing music. Add this to Xenoblade too. You got a Pikachu. Bloy action. Welcome to Kazoo Club. Don says, please put my other supers towards Rosen Sins Ballad Children and Shadows of Hyrule Two for a timid. Uh, oh, you want me to? You put one to each. Okay. Uh, it is around uh, Zippity, uh for zero. Wait, hang on. Children's Shadows of uh, Hyrule. Uh, put, th put three towards Rosen's Sins. Ballad Children. Are these all? Are these all? Uh, chat, can you confirm that these are, uh, or Don, perhaps, you, can you confirm that these are games? Are these games? Uh, yeah, Don, let, let me know what you want, what you want for, uh, what you want for games. Uh, King Peggy. And chat, look out for what Don says to make sure I don't miss it. We can notate it down and Don gets counted for. Uh, King Peggy. Uh, three months at Kazoo Club. I'm King Peggy. Zombie Mike, hope you're feeling better. Pikachu says putting an extra up for Fort Xenoblade 2. Now, while we give Don a minute to figure out which OSTs... Don would like, I'm going to give you guys some cool things. So the first thing uh, is, hey, if any of you play piano or know anyone who plays piano or you want to uh, get a Christmas present, early Christmas present, get that taken care of for someone who does play piano, um, I've got some piano books that are on sale right now on Amazon for $29.99 uh, is their list price. Uh, but you can get it for free here. All you got to do is cover the shipping and the handling. I've got about 15 copies left so i'm gonna put uh i'm gonna put the link in here and i'm actually gonna delete the link i'm not gonna leave it in the chat so go ahead and grab it binding of isaac antebirth you got it don let me write that down so guys if you want a free copy of my piano book it went to number one bestseller on amazon in its category it hit number one new release in a ton of categories when it first came out uh go to that link right now it ships to the usa uh, all you got to do is pay for shipping and handling, and you get the book for free. And Don, I'm putting down Don Binding of Isaac. And it was which one? 
Don says. Where's Don? Don says. Anti birth. You got it. All right, guys, grab that link. Shipping and handling, get a free copy of my piano book. I've only got a couple copies left, and I'm going to be deleting that link. It's not going to stay in chat forever. Uh, so that also means on the VOD, people aren't going to do it. And I'm giving you guys this offer because you hung out with me to the end. And I like to give people who hang out with me to the end free stuff. So that ships to the U.S. I'm going to give that another minute up there. So if you want to grab yourself a copy of the piano book or get something for someone for Christmas, get your shopping taken care of. Go and grab it. The link's there. The link's there. The link is there. I'm going to give that another minute. Go and grab it. All right, I'm deleting that now. And it's gone. Say goodbye. While you're there, if you get in the piano book, make sure you grab the practice journal too. Okay, and last thing I'm going to give all of y'all is an invite to my Discord. Come on and hang out. I'm going to leave that in the chat. That's going to stay. And with that, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for supporting the channel and myself with Super Chats. I really, really appreciate it. It means the world to me. Uh, I get to spend a lot more time making cool stuff for you guys because uh, you support me with Super Chats. Uh, so thank you so much. And I will see y'all in next time. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, crush that notification bell because we're going to do the DLC in a couple days. So I'll see you guys then. Take care. Bye-bye.